All right. Hello, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming today. Uh, this is Keith Hawkey. I'm, um, I'm with CMP Technologies. We are a, a strong partner here with Punch Alert, and um, we're very excited to be uh, doing this webinar with everyone. Uh, just uh, briefly about us, uh, we are a, a unified communications and network integration security and data solutions provider here in Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, service mostly the Southeast, uh, but other parts of the country as well. Um, but more importantly, uh, we're very excited about Punch Alert and Rescue is coming on the near horizon. Um, and just before we begin, and I'm going to hand this off to Greg, uh, just be aware that uh, what's even more exciting is that there is a 50% off promotion for early adopters uh, for pre-ordering for Rescue. Uh, there's no risk involved. It's um, just sort of a, a place to deposit that you can access and bring back if you decide to change your mind later on. But um, without further ado, I'll hand this off to Greg Arts. He's the founder of Punch Alert. And um, here you go, Greg. Great. Thanks, Keith. Appreciate it. Thanks, everyone, for your time today. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with our standard kind of presentation about the platform, you know, our story, what we do, why we do it. Uh, really what's happening in, in the world of emergency response and, and wearable safety as well, which is a, a new world for us we've been diving into since late 2017. Uh, just a couple of quick reminders. Um, if you have questions, please type, type them in. There's Q&A. Um, I'll try and address them during or, or, or at the very least at the end. Uh, we are recording this. If you need a copy of that, just let us know. We can forward it on to folks that couldn't make it. Um, and uh, what else? That should be about it. There might be some other features like raising your hand, things like that. Feel free to use whatever you like and we'll, we'll make it interactive. Um, if you're a current customer, we're seeing a, I'm seeing a mix of people and still more folks trickle in here. So seeing a mix, some of you are gonna know a little bit in parts um, and other you, others of you might uh, not know much about us at all. So uh, I'll cover everything, but there are going to be some, some things for everyone in this. I'm going to cover a couple new features that we're really excited to, to put out in the mobile app um, as, as early as next week. So that's, that's pretty exciting. Um, we're going to talk, obviously, about rescue and how the progress is going on that front. Um, we are in a pre-order period for rescue, uh, and that's going very well. I'll give you the timeline on that. Um, it is scheduled for launch at the end of the year. Most likely, we're looking at a Q1 delivery of the product. Um, and so we'll, we'll dive into that. And it's... Uh, it's been really an exciting process for us. So, um, so let's kick it off. So Punch Alert, as, as many of you know, we are a safety communications platform. And so we, we call it that because it is a mass notification system. And, and that is more generally the way our space is, uh, is defined, you know, emergency mass notification systems, such as many others out there. Um, however, we really looked at the problem from a different standpoint. We thought about, you know, in an emergency, how do people communicate? And mass notifying a large group is important. It's a component of it. But really, we just think of it as when an emergency happens, how does it start? What happens in the middle? How does it end? And how are different people a component of that process? And when you start thinking of it that way, you really end up thinking of it from two perspectives, from the consumer, kind of the individual perspective. Just think of yourself with your family at home, et cetera. And then you've got your workplace, right? And in the workplace, whether you, you're part of a school, a YMCA, a place of worship, a nonprofit, a, a corporation or a government office, you all generally have a similar problem, similar challenge, which is, you know, during an incident, you want to communicate as effectively as possible internally. But you also want to communicate as effectively as possible with the police or whoever the responders for that uh, situation might be. So that's a problem that we had wanted to address at the organizational level, but we also wanted to build a platform that could extend to the user even outside of work even outside of school, even outside of your place of business. So this is really uh, kind of our broader vision for a community-driven approach to safety and emergency response. And you kind of see how we kind of tie it all together. So again, a little backstory, 2007, Virginia Tech, mass notifications really took off, okay? Especially everyone was carrying around flip phones and, uh, and it became kind of obvious, yeah, we've got to reach these people on their flip phones really fast. Email is not the right way to go. Uh, neither is calling, let's, let's text everybody. And so those things took off. Uh, but we, we started working on this in 2013. We saw incidents like Sandy Hook and, and saw slow response. And it wasn't for lack of technology, just lots of communication bottlenecks. 
So you have your video surveillance, you have your two-way radio, some people do. Intercom systems, maybe you could get to it, maybe you can't. You know, these are all great day-to-day -day point solutions. Your phone system, but the problem is during an emergency, it's hard to really tie them all together. Tying it all together is ultimately what's gonna, you know, kind of break the silos of these uh, lack of communication challenges and uh, centralize everything and reduce response time. That's our end up, our end goal, right? Reducing response time. So we wanted to do that. We wanted to help you distribute your plans too. So you don't have to think so much. This is what's going on. It's a fire, it's a fire drill, it's a medical situation, it's a suspicious person on property. This is what we do. So remember to have that plan right in front of you. That's important. The other important part of this is recording everything, capturing a record of what happened, who reported it, at what time, who, who checked in, who was on our property at that time, who submitted what information, what photos, what video, what audio do we have, when was it resolved, what mass notifications were sent out, if any, and so on. So all this is really important information that you'd want to capture during an emergency. And we'll show you how we do that. So we, we really, when we looked at Punch Alert, we said, we looked at this environment, you know, back in 2013, we said there are two things that are really important to do. Number one is build a great smartphone app that could be leveraged, not just by the broader audience of your users, thinking about your kind of employees or your staff and faculty or your students or your members or, you know, and so on, your community. The, the smartphone app is a great opportunity to, to leverage something that people already have that's location aware, that can submit rich content um, and, uh, and so many other things. So that's important. But we also wanted to create an experience that's really designed for your responder teams. So you can manage those incidents most of the time without other people even knowing about it, right? So the, the mobile experience was key. We lived in a world where command centers were really important for a long time. And I would argue these days, it's more important that even the command centers are mobile and the responders are mobile and they can do everything they need to do in a very mobile capacity. So we designed it in that way. The other thing we designed, of course, is a, is a cloud-based platform. Everything software as a service. That means that whether you have uh, five people, 25 people, or 25,000 people, this can all run from our cl cloud environment without you managing some heavy uh, software locally and putting a burden on your IT department. So um, it's extremely scalable and everything is running, again, from a cloud environment. That also really allows us to integrate with things very easily. We can pull things together and centralize because we're not really reliant on what's in your data center and then how do we get access to other things locally. We can connect to local things actually and we'll talk about that. Um, but uh, the integration side has been a really exciting area of growth for us uh, in our company and it's basically been afforded by having a cloud-based platform. So for those of you that know Punch Alert, there are three modules, emergencies, tips, and announcements. And you'll see how we're expanding on all these. All three of these modules are, are undergoing great growth this year. We have a full roadmap for the entire year uh, already in place with ideas that have been given to us by our customers. So we've been really fortunate to just grow with our customers and learn from them. And we continue to do that. Every single week we get more and more ideas from our customers. We meet with them. They give us ideas. We talk about them internally in our weekly product meeting and then we put them on our roadmap if they make sense. So. These things get slotted in all the time. If you have ideas, we really want to hear them. So quickly on emergencies, you know, just to address all three modules before, before I demonstrate them, it is designed for responders to manage incidents right in their smartphone. So whether the emergency was reported from the mobile app or at some point soon from rescue or maybe from some other integrated source like your phone system, maybe your short tail phone system, um, someone dialing 911, Someone reports an emergency, your safety team needs to manage it, and this is how they do it. They can do it right in the mobile app, and they can communicate with each other. So the first layer of communication is just whoever reported the emergency, and then the responder team. So at this point, it is not mass notified. And you'll see some great features in here, how you can use text, audio, photos, video, submit attendance, uh, see who, where people are that are checked in on, the, on a map, change the category, read the emergency plans, capture everything from beginning to end. And you'll see the management capabilities are right in the mobile app as well. So if you are a responder, you can release an incident mass to notify a large group. You don't have to jump to some other system. So we think that's really important, the seamless nature, kind of the, the, the move from point solutions like, like panic buttons and mass notification into just a seamless safety platform. So you don't have to jump around. So all those capabilities are built into one platform. We think that's really key. Now keep in mind, we do send out text messages, we do send out emails, automated phone calls, desktop alerts, 
you have to be able to do all those things because you need to be able to reach everybody effectively. And, and perhaps you're in a setting where you don't want to promote the mobile app or some people just don't want to download a mobile app and that's all fine. Um, but the mobile app is certainly encouraged and, and really easy to onboard. Okay, for those of you that are like, okay, I know all this already, I want to introduce a new feature. So it's called status. Something we've been asked about for quite a long time and it's such a simple thing. Uh, we finally got to the point in our roadmap where we can implement it. So it's been really exciting and you're gonna all see it uh, if you're a Punch Alert customer as early as next week. So the idea is quite simple. During an emergency, you can set your status if you have access to the emergency. And the basic status functions are I'm okay, I'm not okay, or I'm off property. What's cool about this, it does not create a stream entry. Now, the reason being, if you have, you know, if you've released an emergency to your 200 employees or 5,000 employees or whatever it is, and they're all submitting, I'm okay, I'm not okay, you don't wanna flood the stream with that because you wanna limit the stream, we call this kind of area on the left, the stream. We wanna limit that for important kind of conversational information that might be coming through, a photo, a text. But the I'm okay, I'm not okay is really simple information that you need to be able to capture. And so we present that to responders in a couple of simple ways. When you go to the manage interface, you can see of the people that have checked in, so maybe of the, of the four people that are actually, of the four people in your organization, one has checked in, and the, the, of that one person, that one person's okay. Obviously, you'll see much bigger numbers, and this will all be relevant. You can press on the I'm okay to see who that is, or on the I'm, no, I'm not okay. What that basically is doing is going to the check-in list and pre-filtering. So you're gonna see a little filter at the bottom right here. When you press on it, you'll see that you can filter by, by role, which is the standard filter that you most of you are familiar with in terms of, I wanna see just my responders, I wanna see just my employees, my other roles that I've set up, or you could filter by status. These are the people that are okay, this is the person that's not okay, and then you can obviously drill down. I'll be happy to demonstrate this for you interactively um, later in the webinar. Can any questions you have, uh, feel free to chime in and uh, I'll try and address them now or, or later on. All right, so uh, the tip category, uh, the tip module rather, is, um, is very simple uh, to use. Um, basically, uh, you can customize this. So this is for incidents that are non-emergencies. So this enables you to allow people in your organization to report things that are could be facility issues, it could be IT issues. Um, so there, there are many different uh, ways you can leverage this platform. I'm sorry, I'm tinkering with the lights here a little bit for the camera's purposes. Um, but uh, the idea is it could be a lost and found, it could be a service related issue, you can actually have fun with it. Each category you can upload your custom icon, you could enable one person to get notified or you could enable 25 people to get notified. So each one is very different. So keep in mind, these are things that don't need to be necessarily public within your organization. You can use them that way, but uh, it could just be something where you want inappropriate activity either by an employee or a student being uh, a way to submit that in an anonymous fashion that only notifies a small group of people. And it, it does enable a two-way communication path after that's completed. So. The tips is a great way to leverage the platform on a daily basis. We think that's really important. This daily utility of a safety platform is key because there are just too many systems out there, mass notification systems and even systems like ours, where uh, the, the platforms are really purchased for protection against maybe an active shooter and they never get used, which really does not uh, solve the problem of let's create an ecosystem, an environment where people feel comfortable reporting things that you know, the see something, say something actually means something within your company or organization, and you're not you're you're not afraid to report an emergency. But you're also not afraid to post tips and receive announcements and open up the app, and it's top of mind. And so, if there is an emergency, you're not going to forget about it. Okay, so the announcement module. This is kind of the opposite of tips. These are your day-to-day -day mass notifications that you're going to want to send out. You can choose the channels. Not everyone in your organization can do this. You have to be an announcement administrator. Uh, we'll talk about the different administrator functions in our platform. Uh, there are four, believe it or not, uh, the system admin and then an admin for each of our three modules. So you could be a responder, but not an announcement admin. Likewise, you could be an announcement admin, but maybe not uh, an internal responder or emergency admin. So these are different settings that you can kind of configure as you're getting started uh, with the platform. But if you are an admin, you can do this. You can send out announcements. You can enable comments on these announcements choose the channels, choose your lists. Lots of really interesting features we're expanding upon 
uh, in this uh, in this module as well. Okay, another new feature. It's called iPause, and these are this is our first added outside layer of alerting to Punch Alert. That's not coming from an organization that uses Punch Alert. Um, so, you know, today, obviously, most of the alerts you're getting are probably from your organization, but there may be some public alerts. You maybe go to the Explore tab, which we're in the process of renaming the Follow tab, where you'll be able to follow other organizations. For example, in Charlotte, there are many, and I'll demo that, and you can see all these great geofences. But in many different parts of the country, we're starting to see con congestion, even a little bit in Canada, where uh, there are masses, little pockets of, of customers that use the platform, and the more that do, the more this kind of following of nearby organizations is adding value. So it's great to get kind of community alerts, not just your own organizational alerts. We're just adding to that with this next layer of first iPods alerts. And these are FEMA driven. So this includes weather alerts, this includes Amber, other types of alerts that, uh, that FEMA might distribute. And we categorize them in those three categories, in those three ways of tabs at the top. Uh, so you'll see them in your all tab, but you can also scroll to the right and see a weather, Amber and other and those will start to pop in uh, in your mobile app over time. We are, the next one we're looking at is Lightning. For some of you, you're purchasing your own uh, services for Lightning Alerts, and we're thinking of ways we can integrate that into the Punch Alert as a subscription, should you have interest in it. Uh, again, just centralizing everything makes your lives a little bit easier. So these are the types of things we're adding over time. If you're already subscribing to a service, there are some, if you're a big corporation, there's some kind of advanced services out there where you may have your own kind of monitoring team looking at worldwide activity that you need to know about. And if you do subscribe to one of those services, there's a good chance we could probably pull in that feed as well into our service. So again, if we can make your life simpler um, with safety related information, that's our goal. Okay, how are we different? Many of you have seen this slide already. Uh, you know, we think of it as a 10 step life cycle. So it's not a mass notification, it's not a panic button system, it's not just a way to call 911 or chat with your responders. It is a life cycle management product and we really just wanna be there to kind of keep, keep innovating, keep thinking about ways or ways you need to communicate or things you might be able to do during an emergency where technology can help and we can streamline something that might have an impact on saving lives. That's our goal. And so these are some of the things that may happen during an emergency. They may not. So you may need to mass notify, you may not. But these are all possible. And, um, and so we, that's, that's how we kind of think about this life cycle. Now, the 911 calling thing, for those of you that know about 911 Plus, this has been an important part of our platform since 20, late 2017 when we first launched it. It was not something we were able to do in 2013 or 14 when we first started on this. We built it on top of the bandwidth.com network. Um, and there's a lot we can talk about there. If you have any developers on hand, um, this is something that we're now opening up to third-party developers. So you can leverage our 911 Plus infrastructure uh, even outside of Punch Alert within your own app, within your own hardware product um, that relies on database 911 connectivity. The basic challenge backing up is when you call 911 from a cell phone, uh, there's a decent chance that uh, 911 will not know exactly where you are. Now, this is getting better in, in many different ways. Uh, Apple and Google have done some interesting partnerships with some other companies in our space to improve some of this um, data. It doesn't work in 100% of the country, however, um, and calls are still getting routed through the cell carrier, which, which, which means you, know, you, you still have this kind of opaque call where you don't really know what information is being sent. It's not really in front of you, um, and we would really felt that needed to be solved. The other, the other part of this challenge we really um, saw as important was you need to know when a 911 call is happening on your property. And so when you use 911 Plus in Punch Alert, but also this can happen in your other apps if should you choose, you can see the name, the callback number, and most notably the location. We're now using something called dynamic location routing. It's, it's amazingly powerful in, in terms of what we can do. So one thing you'll see in the emergency page more over the course of this year is the ability to uh, immediately set a, a category of what's happening even before reporting the emergency. That's pretty powerful because then we'll actually be able to use that information in the 911 call should you call 911. There are other ways we're gonna use that information as well. We have a third field. We have access to not just sending a written location 
It could say the name of your organization or business or school. It could also deliver an XY coordinate. It could deliver a third field. That third field could be an indoor location if you have access to that. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Uh, so 911 Plus is something that's constantly evolving. We're very lucky to be close partners with bandwidth.com. Uh, and they are really, we believe, the best network for this kind of infrastructure in the country. They're the ones that power all of Google's uh, uh, voice services. And um, so, yeah, really lucky to partner with them on the 91 Plus and 91 Plus Connect side. We're also pretty lucky that we were able to trademark the 91 Plus uh, uh, name and icon this year. So we're excited about that. Okay, without further ado, rescue. So we've been thinking about this for a long time, uh, the idea of wearable safety. It was pretty early on that we were asked for, do you have physical buttons to complement your software? And the answer was always no, we don't. If you have wired buttons, we might be able to integrate. If there are some other third party buttons out there that you like, we might be able to integrate. And we did that a few times and we pointed people in some different directions. There was never really a mobile kind of wearable button that we saw that was truly reliable, most of these buttons were basically leveraging Bluetooth or maybe cellular to communicate either with your phone, with a hub, or directly with the cloud. Um, you know, think about those maybe Amazon little buttons, think about Flix. These are really cool devices and for day-to-day -day use of ordering more detergent or turning a light on, that's great. And, and the technology is very cool. Um, and, uh, and we provided, you know, again, we did some of those types of integrations with the caveat that these are not emergency designed buttons. I would not call them truly reliable at the standard that you need an emergency system. And, and, and one of the most basic reasons for why is because you're not actively monitoring them. You're not getting an alert that says, Hey, I'm offline right now. Um, you know, and, and that's kind of the, the level of, of uh, not or I'm offline or the battery's low or I'm out of range, you know, wh whatever it might be, you know, these are, this is really important information. You don't want to find out that your panic button doesn't work when you're using it. Even wired panic buttons, we hear stories about that too. Now, uh, wired panic buttons have been, you know, used for a very long time and, you know, they uh, are constantly being forgotten, right? Where, where are they? I don't even know. And then you find a button, you're like, what does that button do again? I forgot. Um, and then, and then they get used and they don't even work. So, they actually can fail quite a bit as well, and you got to look into that and the wiring and, and the maintenance and so on. So there's a whole host of reason, issues with wired panic buttons as well. So we've, we've kind of known that as a software company, we did not dive into this until late 2017. And, and at that point, we did decide to work on it. And for one of the main reasons was there, one of our customers had, had, a, had a situation. We work with a lot of YMCAs. We knew that YMCA's could not really leverage our product in the pool areas because people didn't have their smartphones. So it's one of those unique environments where smartphones are not something you can use. And there are other settings like that too, some industrial settings, healthcare settings, where there just may not be smartphones handy or it may not just be uh, easy to pull it out and open up an app and use it. So there was clearly a need. The other factor which we really saw a need for was you know, there was no product in the market that could combine this type of pro this type of technology with water activation. So, um, in 2017, uh, a lifeguard in Charlotte uh, passed away, had a seizure, fell in the pool, and drowned. They they didn't discover it until uh, a while later. And um, you know, water is is obviously drowning is obviously a very serious thing. Uh, it happens all the time uh, in in large numbers and lifeguards themselves need backup and they they might need support as well so going to the wall to pick up a phone or hit a button on the wall as a lifeguard is not uh, is not a solution that really makes a lot of sense when you're dealing with an emergency yourself or in the water that didn't make a lot of sense and it really didn't make the wall panic button idea just doesn't make a lot of sense for a lot of organizations so we looked into this and we decided um, the technology is, is perfect um, in the Internet of Things world, uh, the technology we're leveraging is called LoRaWAN. It's a long-range, low-frequency radio signal. There's been a lot of innovation around over the last few years, and this is something that happens to work perfectly through water. Uh, depending on the antenna strength, we've seen it as, as, as much as 20 feet in depth work. 
Um, and uh, so it works through water and it works at great ranges. So if you have open fields, for example, the, the, the connectivity can be measured in miles as opposed to feet. So depending on your construction and your facilities, you may need more than one alert station, but, the, uh, but maybe not. You might only need one and because of the range. So the idea is this alert station gets put on the wall. There it is. Um, and uh, it will, it does have a button on it, which can be pressed, either activate or reset an incident. It does have a speaker and has the ability to, to transmit light. It is connected to the internet and power over power over ethernet. That's the primary uh, network, connect, network connection. It also has cellular, so cellular is a backup source of connectivity should the network go down, um, and uh, along with backup power. And you mount it on the wall and, and wire it through ethernet. So that's the, that's the alert station. Now these little buttons are the actual activators. Now, notice you can wear them on the wrist. We're gonna provide some of these little wearables for folks like lifeguards that may really need them handy on the wrist. But it's a very flexible little device. It has a button, obviously, and it has uh, flush-mounted copper contacts for um, water activation. That allows it, so when, it does really truly need to be submerged versus getting splashed to activate but the button is very simple to simply put your hand on and press. Now you can wear it on the wrist, but it's a multifunctional clip, so that allows you to clip it on clothing, on your belt, stick it in your pocket, wear it on your clothing uh, in some other way, or we'll provide some lanyard strings as well, so if you wanna wear it around your neck, um, you know, depending on your use case, we really wanted it to be flexible in that way. So, uh, so those are the wearables. You saw the charging station, let me back up a moment. So if you see the charging station in the first image here, no, I'm sorry. Okay, so this is the charging station, and you know you simply take the device, you know, and uh, and and plug it in, and that's how it gets charged. So the reason it's a it is rechargeable, is because we're actively monitoring the connection, we're actively monitoring the battery life of these devices. So that means that uh, it will use power throughout the day and it's not gonna last for two years without charging. Now, how long will it last without charging? That really depends on what heartbeat we decide to add to it. Uh, we've talked about you know, a heartbeat of every five seconds all the way through a heartbeat every 30 seconds. It'll probably be somewhere in that range just to see how, you know, what is the battery consumption and how, long, how often do people need to recharge these things. Obviously, minimum battery life has to be eight hours of active use. We're hoping for much, much better than that. Um, so there, you know, a, a, still a number of things we're just tweaking at this point. We built a prototype and demonstrated it uh, last year uh, at the YMCA Risk Management Conference. We're now deep in the weeds of this LoRaWAN technology and optimizing basically the antenna. Um, we've solved, we noticed that there's some really cool technologies we can use just to fast track our development, but the onboard antennas weren't quite strong enough. So we're adding some additional antennas that can be kind of wired through the device to improve the signal strength because kind of the onboard basic stuff we were using was, wasn't was penetrating through the depth of water that we wanted. Um, it was only going through two feet and we, we really need much more than that. Um, but the, the combination of the water sensor, the speed at which we're able to send out an alert the second it hits the water, really doesn't require that we have massive depth capabilities because it's so fast at reporting the second it hits the water and the, you know, the depth of water, but we're adding a buffer to that. We're also uh, leveraging our accelerometer, um, which is a great way to um, kind of create a backup uh, where if somehow, you know, think of an Olympic diver getting to the bottom of a pool so amazingly quickly that the signal couldn't get out fast enough, which even that I'm not sure, I think it still would get out. Um, but under that kind of scenario, you know, you have, other technologies on board that we can leverage. We can leverage the accelerometer. Based on the accelerometer, we could speed up the heartbeat. We can say the lack of a connection for a certain amount of time with that heartbeat can activate the alarm much faster. So we have backups upon backups. This is really what makes it so reliable. Um, and this is also why it's taking us uh, two years to bring it, uh, a little over two years to bring it to market. So, um, so we're taking it very seriously. Uh, it, it naturally plugs into Punch Alert. Obviously, this base station is connected to the internet, so it creates a punch alert emergency, and it'll inform you where, you know, exactly what button reported the incident, um, and uh, any other information we have about it. 
Uh, over time, we're going to leverage more of the sensors. We're putting sensors and technology into both the base station and the wearables that we're not even using. So that allows us to do over-the-air firmware updates and potentially add technology over time. Pressure sensors, um, potentially temperature, uh, maybe Bluetooth for indoor location, GPS. There's a lot of technology we could add. Even we've talked about later, later versions of the base station having a camera. So um, we're really excited about the path of this. But the first version, it's really important that we just get out the base functionality of a really reliable, water-activated, internet-enabled panic button system. So if you have any questions on that, I'd love to hear them. Uh, we are going through a little time, um, time a little quickly here. So I'm gonna put my phone on the screen, get ready to demo for you all. Uh, and while I'm doing that transfer, if you have questions about rescue, uh, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay. I do see one question that came in. Uh, how will, and I'll address it right now. How will this work in an aquatic area with lifeguards who cannot have cell phones on deck? Well, I guess that question was uh, asked uh, a little while ago, and hopefully that was answered by rescue. Really, uh, the best answer we have is rescue, and that's why we're working on that on that solution. All right. So now I'm going to share my phone. All right. All right. Perfect. So uh, hopefully everybody can see my phone on the screen and I'm going to load up punch alert. For those of you that haven't seen punch alert in a little while, you'll notice the bit, this big red button interface. We call this launch pad actually, and it's something that we're going to be adding to over time. Um, we've brought the big red button back. A lot of people really like that. Um, it can be minimized as you can see. And now I can kind of look around Charlotte and notice you've got all these purple geofences all over town. It's almost like the, the city is sick with something. Now, those, are, those are just protected areas of our customers, or at least the ones that I'm following in town. And you can see how our customers create geofences. Geofences are basically ways of defining your protected area. And um, you, know, you can create geofences within geofences and, and, and so on. So that's what, that's what that looks like. And everything in Punch Alert is based on where you are in that moment. So um, you know, at this moment, if I go back to my current location, you'll notice I'm inside a Punch Technologies geofence, which is why it defaults to Punch Technologies. Now, one of the new builds you're going to see coming out later this year, we're adding an, a full app filter at the top where you can actually change everything to be based on just your organization. So it kind of filters the whole experience to just your organization, which is really cool. We're going to even give you control over the color at the top. So we're excited about that. Um, but let's start with just this map. So you know, when I look at the map, you see I'm inside a geofence. There's a bunch of tips going on around me. Uh, I could always drop a pin on a map, do a little long press, report from there, or I can just go to this little search box at the top, and maybe choose from my favorites. So if I wanted, for example, to go to my home address, I could do that and report an emergency from there. But instead, let's go back to my current location, and I'm gonna just hit the red button. Now it's defaulting to punch technologies, and it's counting down. So I've got a 30 second countdown. All right. and you'll see the address at the top. That's my address, my current address. If I need to change it, I can. That would pause the countdown, give me time to change it. But everything looks good. I'm gonna skip the countdown, hit the report button. And now I've got the emergency type screen. You'll also see we have an, uh, an icon gallery for this coming out later this year, which we're excited about as well. And you'll be able to set it even before you report the emergency. But the way it works today is you report first and then you set the category. So I reported it. Notice the category has been set and there is an emergency plan available. It's a fire, so let's take a look at my fire plan. Now we call this the main stream page and it's already notified all responders on my team and I can communicate with them, smoke and lobby. Maybe someone else wants to respond on their way. You know, so we're gonna start communicating back and forth, et cetera. Um, and you'll see Ashley just submitted something. I'm gonna submit a photo. You'll see why in a moment. That's a beacon. You'll see why, how we use beacons. People can also submit audio. So sometimes if you're just trying to capture something that's going on, um, it's pretty easy to do that. So you simply record and submit. I can also activate this call 911 plus feature. 
Oh, I think Zoom just decided to freeze. So that's it's not showing anything past my recording, but um, now showing a different screen. So let me see if I can pause Zoom and restart it. Apologize for that. And we're hitting a little snag now where it doesn't want to show my phone. So I apologize. We'll get it going. Just give me a moment. And Zoom does not seem to want to let me do that. So we're going to go a different path. I apologize. Thanks for your patience. Well, this technology is not working with us today. Zoom does not want, let me stop the share again and reshare. And that does not seem to be working. So we're gonna go to plan C and I'm gonna try and launch it from my phone. Well, uh, while Greg is uh, working on some technical issues, uh, does anyone have any, any questions um, this far through and any maybe specific um, situations that, that might need a, a specific solution? For your particular environment, feel free to ask in the chat bar or the Q and A tab. All right. Okay. Can everyone see my phone on the screen? Keith, you see that? Yeah, yeah, we're good. Okay. All right, this may be a little slower. Yep, it looks like a delay. And I need to also mute my phone, which... Okay. So I'm gonna go back into the emergency. Sorry, I need to mute this somehow. No, I don't wanna mess with the broadcast though. And my phone appears to be shutting down. So that is not going well. I apologize, everybody. Um, yep, the application froze. The Zoom application. Just as I was bragging about Zoom today. All right. Um, one more time. Start broadcast. Two, one. Okay. Fingers crossed. Everyone can see my screen. Okay. I'm back in the emergency. So here we go. Yeah. Keith, you see my screen okay? Just want to make sure everyone's seeing it. Yes. Yep. We can see okay. It. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So uh, so this is the stream page. 
let's get to the new feature very quickly so before we lose this again. So at the very top, you'll notice your status. I'm going to go ahead and set my status. I'm okay. Very good. Very simple. If I go to the check-in list at the top right, you'll notice I've got my stats. So two of 24 people in our organization are checked in. Of them, two are okay. I can press that and see who those are. It's Ashley and myself. Very good. And I can notice I can filter by status or by role. So if I wanted to just see who is okay, I can do that. There's nobody that's not okay. Everyone's fine. So this is a really simple way to get that information from folks. So if you have a process where you just want everybody to check in, that's great. The check-in process is important, but checking in doesn't necessarily mean everything's okay. This is just an added layer of really limited basic interaction, something you can inform your folks to do to simply say, I'm okay during an emergency. Now, you saw on this stream page, and I can kind of minimize this little top section there if you like. Um, you saw on this page how you can submit text, audio, photos, video. Um, the 911 call is right here at the bottom, um, or, which would also inform everybody that you're calling 911. But you can also call someone directly on your team. You could fill out the attendance report. So very simple. So that's on the bottom here. Now at the top, you'll notice the map. And on the map here, you're going to see within a geofence, you're going to track all your checked in folks. You can filter it as well on the bottom. Now, sometimes it helps to put this in satellite mode. But even still on satellite mode, you'll notice kind of there's a degree of accuracy with GPS when you're indoors. That's just the nature of, you know, any of our devices. So if I want to drill down, notice I can do that. If I view my profile, you'll see that Greg's office is within 3.4 meters. If you remember that beacon I took a photo of, that's that beacon above my door. So that is a way you could have indoor location accuracy should you, should you need beyond GPS. Certainly they're optional. You'll notice I've got some demo beacons near me in my bag. It's amazing what's happening with beacons actually. I have a new type of beacon in front of me here, which has GPS as well. So um, there's some powerful things you can do with beacons. Right now we use them primarily, primarily for indoor locations, but if you have a use case where you need to track people uh, without even a smartphone and you want to or you want to create that kind of awareness of proximity So my smartphone is near someone else is device in their bag or on the wall Those are the types of things you can do now uh, Leveraging this technology. So again, those are optional and you can see I'm in the bigger punch office That's just the name of the geofence. I'm in so if you view my profile you can see this geofence is named bigger punch office you can create as many, that's why it makes sense to name as many geofences and create as many as you like. Okay, so that's the, that's the map. Now, if I press the three dots, you'll see this whole management section. This is where I want to notify roles. So maybe I want to notify employees of the emergency. Maybe as a next step. Now, once I've notified them, now they have access to that. It's a fire, it's a, it's, they have the emergency plan, but they don't have other content. They can set their status, which is great, um, but they don't have other content. If you want to send them other content, you can do that manually through the send update. Stay inside and wait for more information. You can actually issue a text update. We have noticed you'll see a new feature coming here as well, which is which are templates you can use. Um, but I could submit audio. I'm not going to just, I don't want to mess up Zoom again. Um, you could submit photos. And then when you send it, you can now notice because I notified employees of this emergency, now I can send them an update. So I hit send. And you can configure that so it goes out through a number of different channels. Notice I got a text message as well, as well as a push notification. Okay, so that's the update. There's a lockdown trigger. This can be triggered on, triggered off. This has integration points. We talked about the check-in list and how you can filter it by status or role. And I'm changing the emergency category. One thing, let's say I change it to an active shooter. Notice two emergency plans got distributed. So now I, need, now I know what I need to do in this scenario. But also this standard emergency update that says remember to, remember to run, hide, barricade, or fight. So I didn't have to manually send that. No, no administrator had to manually send it. It's just preset as an update to go out whenever this category is created. You could do that for any, any categories you create in Punch Alert. So hopefully these are little eggs, little nuggets that you might not have known about within our platform. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and resolve this incident. When it gets resolved, you can add a note and it does get cleared off of the phone. A detailed report can go out to administrators. And notice if I go to my activity tab and I go to the emergencies section, you'll see that there are no active emergencies at this time. 
All right. So I'll walk you through the other modules, but notice in, in activity, you can go to all, and this is just all your alerts. But if you swipe to the right, and again, this is a new feature, beyond the emergency module, you'll see the weather, amber, and other. And this is where you'll see these types of alerts pop up over time. Okay. So, uh, so that's pretty straightforward. It'll just show up once you see that new feature added next week. Same thing with the status feature. So a great new build coming out next week. Uh, and then more to the launch pad and other things that we talked about. Um, later this quarter or early next quarter. So I think I'll just spend a, a few more minutes maybe showing you the two other modules, the tips module. We're going to post a quick tip. So lost and found is a very common one. You know, keys on floor, maybe you submit a photo, maybe you submit anonymously. Whoever needs to get notified of this lost and found tip can get notified. They can thank it. They can comment on it. Um, uh, what color, you know, they can ask questions. We can kind of go back and forth to figure out what to do about this situation and ultimately clear it. So tips are a really nice, simple way to leverage the platform and every tip category can be customized. So you decide if and how you use tips uh, and who do you want to be able to report them? Who do you want to receive them? These are all at your control. And announcements, kind of the inverse. And there's some features here you may not have seen. So let's create an announcement, weather alert, weather coming, you know, closing office early. Very common one. Now notice there's, I could save this as a draft if I want. So now that I saved it as a draft, I could just leave this interface if I want to, come back later and maybe use this draft. Or maybe you can set up a process where someone writes the draft and other people review it. That can be pretty helpful too. So we also have templates, the difference between templates and drafts. Templates are things that you send recurringly. They don't go away once you send them. They have some placeholders in them like this, current date, and so on, so you can apply. So those are templates, and those are created from the web console. Drafts uh, need to be saved. They can be saved from the, from the mobile app or the web console. But let's go ahead and hit next. Actually, let me go back for a moment. More options. Some of you have seen this already. Add audio recording, add photo, add an emergency type, perhaps add response options. Maybe you want to ask a yes or no question. Maybe you want to turn on, turn on commenting. And then you can kind of preview it. It looks good. You can X out if you don't want it anymore. Hit next. Great. And then you're going to uh, choose your post audience. Hopefully Zoom's not freezing on me again. Should be coming up. All right, it's catching up. All right, there we go. Good. Uh, so I can choose internal responders. Again, you can actually save your draft. So if you have a complex number of lists that you already have integrated or set up, you can choose those lists and then save it as a draft. So you can even save at this point in the process, even at this point. So now you've chosen your message, all your advanced features, who you're sending it to, and what channels, but you're not quite ready to send it yet, save it as a draft for someone else to take a review before you send it. So lots of options there, and you can post it. It pops up within your announcement feed. It sends out through whatever channels you chose. Pretty simple. And if you have interaction capabilities, people can comment, they can respond right there in the activity feed. So those are announcements. Um, and you'll notice, you know, again, this explore tab, this is just a simple way to, for you to follow other organizations um, around you, but it's also a good way for you to dive deeper into your organization. So one preview I will provide is, you know, you can always go in and look at your emergency plans, but soon you're going to be able to view your lists as well. And you'll be able to open up lists that are both private or public. So for example, if you may want to send out alerts related to your organization, um, well, great, you could just send it out to any of your organization's followers. But there may be some things that you want um, people to follow that are a private list or maybe just a specific topic that is public. Um, closure, you know, school closings or, or, or sports events or use of your soccer field or, or health related uh, information. There may be information that you just don't want to send out to everybody, but you want to allow people to subscribe to follow uh, should they have interest. This is going to be a really simple way to do it uh, right there in the list. It's also actually um, available on our website. So people could follow these types of lists on our website as well. Okay, so um, 
I think we've done a good job. We've gone through mo everything in the mobile app for the most part. Uh, we've talked about rescue. Um, a couple other quick things I'll mention. We do have a video coming out, a 30 second video talking about uh, rescue that's going to be available within the next couple weeks. So stay tuned for that. Um, we have a new web console launching this quarter. So it, it might be mid May, it might be early June, but it's coming out soon and you'll see it at admin.punchalert.com. So that's going to be really exciting because the web console uh, hasn't been updated. The design hasn't been updated in several years, and we're really excited to put a whole new refresh on it. If you're an administrator, if you're an emergency admin, if you're a tip admin, if you're an announcement admin, you're going to see a whole new set of features and module, just an interface that's very clean on that web console. Uh, there's also a customer portal. This is something you can actually use now, so maybe I'll, I'll do, give you a quick tour of that. So if you are a customer already of Punch Alert and you are an administrator within your organization, you can see uh, what I'm about to show you. Let's go back to desktop one here and go to the browser. All right, customer portal. Let's log into the customer portal. It's customer.punchalert.com. loading at the moment. And you'll notice uh, several things which are going to be pretty exciting. Uh, a forum for, for folks to actually talk with each other. Uh, plans and resources, things that you may, if you have emergency plans or you want to view what other types of emergency plans people are using, upcoming events, and then training materials. We're, we're, we have a first kind of set of training materials uploaded here, including documentation and videos that you can watch uh, on how to report an emergency, how to you know how to do basic things or manage certain things inside of punch alert so you can watch these videos you just click on this little section on the right um, and uh, to watch videos um, but uh, you know we're going to be constantly adding to this over time and we'd love to hear your thoughts on if this is helpful other things you'd like to see add to it and so on so that's our customer portal um, I think we're we've gone through a good amount of time I really appreciate everyone's time today again it is recorded if you want a copy of that, just let us know. Um, and uh, if you have any other further questions on Punch Alert or on Rescue. Oh, last thing on Rescue. Initially, we had a deadline for the pre-order, this 50% pre-order, of the end of April. Because we've had to spend a little bit extra time tweaking certain things with our radio frequency and our antenna and so on, uh, we're a little bit behind schedule. So we are going to extend that window for at least one month. We may extend it a second month. We may not. So at this point, we're looking at at least you have through May to pre-order for that 50% off uh, discount. Obviously, we'd love for you to do it earlier rather than later. We are requesting 10% down, um, but that is fully refundable as, uh, as Keith alluded to at the beginning. Um, you know, the pre-order interest just really, truly helps us show, number one, the demand that we need for a new product like this, um, but also, number two, to get the first batch quantity at a good size for our first order, uh, which is gonna come pretty soon after our alpha prototype is ready, which is, which is again, coming, coming soon. So, um, so yeah, that, so it really supports us. It helps us to get those pre-orders. It locks you in at that discounted rate and uh, it does remove you from the risk. If you did want to cancel, you could cancel. So uh, no questions uh, about that. Thank you again for your time today and I'll answer any other questions or we can, we can uh, all have a great afternoon. Keith, and you see any questions up there? I don't see any more, no. All right, I'll give everyone one more minute. Anyone else have anything to, to add or, or ask? All right, well, thank you again. I apologize for the little technical uh, issue in the middle there, but um, it's really been a pleasure uh, speaking with everyone and thank you for your, uh, for your support and your time and uh, have a great afternoon.